Hi guys, welcome to the second session on modulus. In the last session, that is the introduction, we have seen the meaning of a modulus in two ways. We have seen that there is a distance approach to modulus and there is a mathematical definition approach to the modulus. In today's video or this particular video, we are going to look at solving equations in modulus using the distance approach. So we are going to solve distance approach in this video and we're going to take the definition approach in the next video. And we will see that one of the two approaches you should be comfortable. You don't need to know both. You should ideally, at least you don't have to be perfect in both. Become perfect in one of the approaches and your questions will become easy. But you should at least have an understanding of what are these two approaches. Then figure out for yourself which is better for you. Okay, so we're going to start with the first approach today uh, or rather in this video which is solving of the modulus using the distance approach. All right, so let's take a look at the first way. So let us say that we have an equation mod x minus three plus mod x plus five is 10. Now we will not use any other meaning of modulus except for the definition of distance in this, right? So let us call the first modulus, the entire value as a not inside i'm talking full modulus itself is a so a is a positive number and the second modulus again the value of the modulus itself which means the value b is positive or non-negative so a plus b are two numbers positive numbers whose total is 10. it could be zero also a and b can be zero also but they are non-negative because i took the modulus itself as a I took modulus itself as A and I took modulus itself as B. So I am converting this into A plus B is equal to 10. Then the next step will be to draw your number line and mark your boundary conditions, boundary points. Remember your boundary points are a simple way to get your boundary points. Equate these each one to zero. So you will get your X equal to three equate the second modulus to zero, you will get your x equal to minus five. If you remember, this is finding out what is the value of a. I told you when you're in the pre, in the introduction class, we saw modulus x minus a, a will be called as the point of interest or a will be called as the boundary point. So some of you might get confused. Sometimes it is negative. Sometimes it is positive, which is a, some of you might get confused. So simple logic, take the value inside the modulus, equate it to zero. Whatever you get, that is called as the boundary point or the point of interest. Okay, so the first point of interest is 3. And the second point of interest, when you equate x plus 5 equal to 0, you will get x as minus 5. These are the two points of interest. Now, it means that you're supposed to find the value of x. Somewhere there is an x such that the distance from x to 3 and x to minus 5, this distance plus this distance is 10. The total is 10. Now, where is such an x? That is what we are supposed to find. So if you notice, the entire number line from minus infinite to plus infinite is divided into three regions because of my boundary points. That is the reason why I also call it as boundary point. Uh, because the point of interest or the boundary point that I keep talking about breaks your complete infinite line into three parts. Part one, part two, and part three. Part three is to the right side of the boundary point. Part two is the middle of the boundary. And the third part is to the left of the boundary. And because it divides it this way, I also call them as boundary points. Okay, so what do I do then? I will take, I will search for my X. Is it possible that my X is in the first region? Is it possible? I don't know. I need to check. So let us start worrying about what if X is in the first region. Let me take the case where the possibility of X lying in the region to the right, extreme right. Okay. That is my condition, which means, uh, or, or it could be middle region or last region, but I will start my solving with the x in the rightmost region. So this is the first condition or first case for me. In this case, what do I do? So I don't know where is x supposed to be. So let me take x somewhere to the right. 
which means from x to 3 the distance if i call this as a then x to 5 the distance will be called as b right obviously because that's the meaning i and i took it as in the beginning but if you observe what is b your b will be nothing but 8 plus a where are you getting this 8 8 is coming to you this 8 is coming to you as the distance between minus 5 to 3 this distance is actually 8 and you can see that my b is 8 plus whatever a i already took so 8 plus a is my b so that is what i i will use now so my a plus b equal to 10 becomes a is a but b is a plus 8 so it becomes 2a plus 8 equal to 10 and a equal to 1 now what is the meaning of a equal to 1 i need x one unit to the right one unit to the right side what does it tell you what is the value of x then remember don't get confused a is not x a only tells you distance from 3 to the right side so the distance is 1 so one distance to the right of 3 is your x so what is your x then thereby your x will then become 4 so this is one case let us also look at the second case i can also have my x lying in between them it is possible right but then if you take the x to be lying in between you will very quickly notice that the distance from x to 3 is a and x to minus 5 is b and clearly a plus b that is a distance from x to 3 and x to 5 is actually 8 right because you can see geometrically this is the distance because this is your a and this is your b so a plus b actually is 8 that is the distance between 3 to minus 5 so obviously 8 cannot be equal to 10 obviously 8 cannot be equal to 10 what does it mean it means you cannot find an x here so in the central region you don't find an x let's take the final case the final case is where your x is lying to the last left side region when you take this you will start observing that x is somewhere to the left hand side we don't know exactly where it is so you will say that from x to 3 the distance is a and x to minus 5 the distance is b but now you'll observe that from minus 5 to 3 is 8 thereby you will get a equal to b plus h the same logic we used in the first case and here you will now write a plus b equal to 10 as a will become b plus h and b will remain as it is so a plus b becomes your your a is b plus h so this is b plus h plus another b that becomes 2b plus h this 2b plus h will give you the total as 10 and thereby your b is 1 b is 1 means the distance is 1 from the minus 5 number to the left side remember it is to, supposed to be to the left side that is what we took graphically you should not change it once you took b left side it is graphically left only so your x is supposed to be one unit to the left of minus 5 which is minus 6 okay so finally we get x as 4 or when did we get 4 in the first case we got x as 4 in the first case or x we got it as minus 6 in the third case in the second case what was the second case in between in between we got no x so ideally should always check for the three cases and sometimes you'll get no x at all sometimes you'll get one x sometimes you can get two x's and so on and so forth right so there are two answers in this question for this equation that we took x will be four or minus six right now <clears throat> let me change and give you a question where we have slightly different notation now i am taking an equation particularly because this is not in the standard form our standard form if you notice is x minus a what do i do when i don't have x minus a but when i have 2x or 3x or the form is ax minus b if i have it like this what do i do 
how do i deal with it so when you have it like this you have to first convert this into the standard form what is the standard form take your two common from the first modulus and bring it out two is positive number it can come out so the inside modulus becomes x minus 7 by 2 and then x plus y will remain as it is so this is your question now how do we deal with this question now some of you might blindly start x equal to 7 by 2 from here and you might start saying that this is a and this is b the problem with this is this is not in your standard form for you to work so you have to convert this in the form of x minus something x minus something then only you can take this total distance as a this total distance as b okay so let's quickly do this uh, do this so what do you say this is 2a what is a this entire thing is my a including the modulus so two times of it becomes 2a and the remaining now becomes b so your equation is 2a plus b is 10 from here onwards the process is same 3.5 and minus 5 are the boundary points because 7 by 2 is 3.5 and minus 5 is the second boundary point now you will look at the three regions you look at the three regions that x can lie okay you look at the three regions in which the x can lie sorry i think i changed the slide a bit too fast let me go back a little right so uh, <clears throat> when you have 2a plus b equal to 10 now what are the regions so you your boundary points uh, you got your boundary points as 3.5 and five um, negative five right so then you will start saying that okay what if x is here what if x is somewhere here then you will say this is my a and this entire thing is my b but b is equal to a plus h or not h it's five to three point five right so it is 8.5 correct so what do you get now 2a will be 2a there's no problem plus b is a plus 8.5 which is equal to 10 and this gives you 3a equal to 1.5 or a equal to 0 0.5 so it means my answer should be half a unit to the right of 3.5 so my x is 4 my x will turn out to be 4 half a unit to the right hand side so this is one answer we got now let's look at the second answer the second answer we will try to get from in between the two regions in between the two regions so x is somewhere here now let us say x is here somewhere we don't know somewhere over here so this distance will become your a and this distance will become your b so your 2a plus b equal to 10 or a plus a plus b equal to 10 and we can clearly see that a plus b a plus b is 8.5 so your a equal to 1.5 your a is equal to 1.5 what does this tell you it tells you that go to the left side of 3.5 go to the left side of 3.5 by 1.5 so that is going from here to here so you will get x equal to 2 you will get x equal to 2 you can verify is it working out see what happens when x equal to 2 you'll get 2 times of or yeah 2 times of 2 minus 3.5 modulus plus 7 modulus now this becomes 2 times of 1.5 plus 7 and clearly this is 10 so x equal to 2 is the second answer Similarly, you will see what happens if x is lying in this area. What if x is here? So you will take somewhere x like this. This is your x. And you will say that x to 3.5 is your a. Always don't mix up your a's and b's. Once you took this as a, it will remain as a throughout. So x to 3.5 is a and x to minus 5 is b. So your a will be b plus 8.5. So your 2a plus b is 10. Now 2a becomes, now remember, this is your a. So it is 2b plus 17 plus b equal to 10. Or 3b equal to minus 7. Or b equal to minus 7 by 3. 
Now, when you get b equal to minus 7 by 3, please keep in mind, we assume that b is supposed to be a positive or rather non-negative number. Because what is b? b is the entire modulus itself. Right? So a modulus cannot be negative. You are getting b to be negative. What does this mean? It means this b cannot exist. This b cannot exist. Which means there is no answer to the left of negative 5. So you have to be careful when you're doing the distance approach, when you get the distance, remember A and B are distances. If any distance is becoming negative, it means such a distance does not exist. Such a distance does not exist. You have to be very careful about it. So you got finally two answers. Your answers were X equal to four and X equal to six, I believe. Uh, no, X was two. Yeah, you got X equal to four and X equal to two. These were the two uh, answers only. The third answer for x does not exist. And you check the entire number line from minus infinite to less infinite. Okay. So guys, this is how we use distance approach in using modulus. Right. Well, uh, so that brings us to the end of the second session where you learned the distance approach usage. In the third session, we're going to use the same set of questions, but learn how to solve them using our definition approach in maths right thank you guys see you in the next video